Joining us live by telephone to discuss this is Chief Economist Steers, Michael Famarotti. Good morning to you, Michael, and thank you for joining us. Good morning. A pleasure to be here. All right. Now, the question this morning I'd I like to ask from you. Right now, people are a bit fixed on the immediate life and debt impact that we haven't begun to do the arithmetic as to the economic implications. Is that a correct assessment? Um, yeah, I think generally, if you look abroad um, over the last week, attention has shifted quite a bit from the medical development of the virus to how governments are going to address the likely economic impact, mainly because quite a few countries have essentially locked down their societies, and that has a clear economic implication. Um, so I think as Lagos especially um, goes into partial lock lockdown, we also begin to look more at the economic implications here in Nigeria. All right, can you help us identify the, the headline cost implications of coronavirus, if you can? Yes, so I think this is one of the more interesting economic situations because it's actually quite easy to understand what's going on, right? Um, the key thing is that the economy is essentially shutting down, right? So business, a, a lot of businesses aren't operating, a lot of factories aren't working, people can't leave their houses. So supply is freezing up and demand is freezing up as well. Um, and economic activity is essentially just being put on ice while people are locked down and we're dealing with the virus. Um, obviously, that means that people aren't earning money, but they will still need to pay bills and expenses. And that, and that applies to both businesses and individuals. So we need to find a way to finance those expenses, even while the economy is on hold. All right, now, we read about the shutdown of Chicago and are told that the GDP of Chicago is equivalent to that of the entire UK and Chicago is one of the financial epicenters of the US. What are the possible cost implications for shutdown of cities? Yeah, so I think China gives us a good example, right? Because obviously the virus spread there quite quickly early on. Um, and early estimates suggest that for the first quarter of the year, Chinese GDP fell by about 15%. Uh, so that gives you a sense of how damaging a full lockdown can be. So it will be interesting to see how exactly um, Chicago and other places like Italy, um, the UK are affected. Um, but generally, the numbers can be quite bad, and that's why we're seeing quite serious responses from governments all over the world. Are, are there any plans being put in place to stave off an avalanche of cost implications? Well, so generally, across the world, yes. Okay. Um, the headline news is that different governments are responding differently, depending on their financial ability to respond, right? So you look at countries like Canada and Australia, and they're willing to spend somewhere close to 5 to 10% of their GDP just to keep the economic damage minimal, while you see countries in Africa who have much less fiscal room um, and there is much less being done by the government simply because they don't have as much money to respond. Right. Let, let's come back home to Nigeria and, and looking at our peculiar situation in the country and especially in Lagos. What, what considerations should be had at this point towards securing our financial future? So, unfortunately, Nigeria is in a bit of a bind. Um, even on a normal day, the government's finances were not particularly good. Now that oil prices have crashed, we can expect quite a big hole in the government finances. So 
the government doesn't have much money to spend. At the same time, though, uh, like I mentioned, if you let this thing go without attacking it, then the economy can freeze up quite a lot. A lot of people lose their jobs. A lot of businesses shut down. Um, and the damage is quite large. So the government needs to step out and do something. So far, it's relied mainly on the central bank to set up a lot of funds and credit lines for businesses and people affected. But the reality is that giving people loans is much less effective in this situation than things like direct transfers, salary guarantees, and so on that we've seen in other countries. Can, can you highlight for us the, the particular link with the oil price and our national budget, if you may? Yeah, so as we know, oil is our biggest export earning. Generally, over the last five years or so, oil has accounted for between 40 and 60% of federal government earnings. So when oil prices fall from about $60 to $30, the amount of money that the government is earning is much less. Um, estimates suggest that the government will be earning something less than um, 100 to 200 billion naira less each month. Now, there's, there's, a, there's a prediction, many are already predicting uh, the possibility of a global depression. And I just want to know from you this morning, what, what is the likelihood of this? And is there anything we can do to, to have this compensated for? And in what ways? Yeah, so obviously it's quite difficult to say clearly because things are so early. But again, because like I said, we are seeing global economies shut down, right? We're talking about large cities like New York, Chicago, places like London, China. These are the centers of the global economy. And as they shut down, we can expect economic activity to freeze up. So I am personally also expecting a recession this year. And the question is probably more how bad it will be rather than if it will happen at all. Okay. In terms of how to avoid it, um, I'm doubtful that we can completely stave that off. But the best thing that governments can do is try as much as possible to provide enough money to businesses and people so that even as the economy is on shutdown, people and businesses can still pay their bills and survive, so that when the medical crisis is over, things can quickly go back to normal. Right. Interesting, you did make mention of the government providing um, some kind of fund support for people. Now, we do hear of stimulus interventions in, in other nations of the world, such as rent and, and tax relief. Is this something that needs to be considered here since the economy is only as strong as the workforce? Yeah, definitely right. So you look at countries like Denmark, for example, they hit their headlines because the government has promised to, to guarantee something like 75% of all salary workers. Um, obviously, that's very good because it means that much fewer people will lose their jobs because firms are confident that they can still pay. The unfortunate reality is that Nigeria doesn't have the money to make those type of promises. And what we've seen instead is that in the bill proposed by the House of Representatives, yeah. um, what's happening is that the government is telling firms that if they don't stack workers, then they'll get a, a tax rebate for the end of the year. The unfortunate thing, though, is that promising someone that you're going to help them pay their workers is a lot more effective than 
telling them that if they don't sack their workers at the end of the year, if they make a profit, then they get some of their tax back. All right, Michael, just before we let you go this morning, what, what can the average individual do to protect their investment in, let's say, shares or even in savings? Well, I think the first thing to realize is that dealing with the medical implications is the priority even to preserving the economy, right? So we've heard a lot of, we've heard quite a bit about social distancing and that remains the most important thing. We know that the healthcare system here isn't as robust as abroad, so we must ensure that we flatten the curve as much as possible. In terms of preserving your investment, well, the reality is that a lot of equity markets are going to be down for quite a bit, and you would find a lot of people going to safe assets. In Nigeria, that generally means dollars. And of course, that's why the central bank has been quite anxious about trying to preserve dollars. And we saw last week, and so as we saw yesterday that it stopped selling dollars to BDC operators, right? So my advice would be for people to find safe assets um, in the form of fixed income instruments and currencies like the dollar um, and possibly even gold depending on how that market is going um, to tide over this period. All right. Chief Economic Spirit, Michael Famarotti, Koladi, thank you very much for joining us and for your contribution. Always a pleasure.